the skill we're going to work on with the next examples is spotting situations like this and just planning ahead as we go. So what we're going to do as we assign, uh, as we uncrisscross, is we're going to try and make sure that whatever our anion ends up is what we would expect it to be. So for instance, in advance, I'd say um, we're expecting phosphate to be a 3 minus, 3 minus, 1 minus, 1 minus, 2 minus. All right. And so let's see if that happens when we uncrisscross. So I'm going to take this 2 and then this 3. And I expect carbonate to be a 2 minus. This thing here I expect to be a 2 minus. So that's okay. We can name it iron. I'm going to take that number right there and make it as a Roman numeral. This 3, the positive number there, carbonate. All right. Copper and hydroxide. Once again, I'm expecting hydroxide to be a 1 minus. And when I uncrisscross here, I'll have 1 minus and 2 plus. So we can call it, like we see it, copper. hydroxide. Again, with this Roman numeral reflecting the oxidation state of that. Now, magnesium, that was actually an accident there, but <clears throat> it's worth practice, which is magnesium is not a transition metal, so it's not going to get a Roman numeral. We expect it to be an oxidation state of 2 plus. So, Making some lemonade there. That one shouldn't have a Roman numeral because it, it's not in this area here. Magnesium is over there in group two. Molybdenum, phosphate. I don't know. I made up most of these compounds, I think. I'm okay with that. Molybdenum. molybdenum. Molybdenum, something, phosphate. And so as we uncrisscross here, I'm going to put the 3 up there, and I'm going to put the 2 up there. And I do expect phosphate to be a 3 minus. That's its oxidation, or its charge, so that's okay. This molybdenum, Roman numeral 2 for that. And then gold phosphate, again, whether or not this exists, um, hurdle number 1 to overcome is spotting the fact that this 4 is part of phosphate. All right, I have one of those. So when I uncrisscross, I'm going to take this one and put it up there. And I'm going to take this number right here, which is a one, and I'm going to put it up there. At which point you know it's a lie because phosphate is supposed to be a three minus. So we can fake it, like we said in the previous uh, page, gold. Well, I need to triple that, so I'll need to triple that, right? Or you can do it brute force, like I had mentioned, looking at uh, trusting some things in not others. I've got gold, and I've got phosphate, and let's look at the breakdown of where those oxidation states come from. Phosphate, I'm expecting this whole thing to be a 3 minus, and I have one of it, so that's 3 minuses. We need to end up neutral. 3 minuses will be crossed out by 3 pluses. There's one of those, so when I go up, I multiplied to go down. I'm going to divide to go up. 3 over 1 is 3 plus. All right? So that 3 is true there as well. And just so we've got this and this and this and this, this and this and this and this, as you see them there. And it might be good if we did a couple more examples where something like that happened before we finish up here. Again, I'm going to refer to a strategy I utilized earlier. All of these involve transition metal compounds, and I know that because I just made these examples up. So I'm just going to start by preemptively adding the parentheses where we're going to put our Roman numerals. And I know red flag might be going up for some of you right there. Anyway, RU is ruthenium, and we're looking at oxygen there. So I have a 1 and a 1, and when I uncrisscross those, <clears throat> I'm going to end up with a 1 minus and a 1 plus. And I know oxygen's not a 1 minus, all right? So I'm going to have to double this to get oxygen to be a 2 minus, and we would end up with ruthenium, R-U-T-H-E-N-I-U-M, 2 oxide. 
And I realize that's hand wavy, but for those of you who get it that way, I don't think you have any problems looking at that and knowing where it came from. Again, I don't do this, ever. I'm always doing it this other way where I trust something and use it to get something else. In this particular case, we had ruthenium and oxygen. Oxygen, I expect to be a two minus. There's one of it, that's two minuses. It's gotta add up to zero, two pluses, so ruthenium has to be two plus. And that is what, I, what we had right there with oxygen as a two minus. And we can try that same type of situation here. It's an analogous example. If we have CUS, I'm not going to even worry about what the copper is. I'm predicting sulfur is going to be a two minus. I trust it more. So I've got one of those. Two times one is two minuses. It's got to add up to zero. And then what's going to balance out two minuses is two pluses. And this will end up at two. I'm predicting. And we may see that happen because it's going to happen. All right. MNBR7. Um, we might as well write that one out as long as we're on a roll here. Whether or not that compound exists, bromine is a 1 minus bromide from group 17 on the periodic table. Times 7 gives us 7 minuses. Still got to add up to 0, so that's going to be balanced out by 7 pluses. Still only have one of those, so I'm going to end up with 7 plus. Weren't expecting that, but there it is, right? So that would be VII. There's our seven. Just looking at it, how would we come up with that? Yeah, uncrisscrossing would have worked there. Um, where were we here? We didn't do the tin oxalate, and we can do that as well. I'm just kind of cramped for space right now. I think what I'll do is I'll fill in everything except the Roman numeral, and then we can hop back and forth a little bit as needed. So this is tin oxalate. That's what that C2O4 is. Copper, sulfide, nickel, and this is, this was just thrown in there to be confusing, also known as C2H3O2, the acetate polyatomic ion. I like to throw in an example like that because it looks scary, but that is something, right? The thing that is in that box is the acetate polyatomic ion. It's a one minus. And then we've got silver and then a carbonate here. So we are, oops, I forgot the manganese. That's supposed to be an S. And bromide. All right, I mentioned earlier we can do this, or we can try to do this by uncrisscrossing, but we should keep an eye on things. I'm expecting oxalate to be a two minus. So um, as we look at this, first thing I need to notice is I have one of that thing. So that would put a one up there and a one up there, which automatically brings us to a problem because oxalate was supposed to be a two minus. So mentally, I'm just going to make that correction, all right? But I think it would be worth our time to glance at this on another sheet so it doesn't get too messy there, but the good news is plenty of room. If we look then at this tin problem, we have SnC2O4. I know C2O4, the polyatomic ions, are two minus. I have one of it, that's two minuses that I have to account for. I have one of these things, it is a two minus. It's gonna be neutral, that's gonna cancel out. Two plus, so I've got a two plus right there. All right, so we had done some hand wavy math and multiplied by some correction factor, or we can do something that works every single time. Um, in this particular case here, you uncrisscross and you'd get a one plus and a one minus, which you hopefully would say to yourself, oh, sulfur is a two minus. And we found that out using this strategy over here. It worked a little better. Nickel and acetate, um, you've got the one right there, so you'd end up with a one plus right there. And then acetate, you expected to be a minus, so we would take that one plus right there and just a quick glance at that. Nickel, CH. 
H3COO or C2H3O2. This happens to be how it's commonly written for organic chemistry, though, because it actually tells you the structure right in the formula. This is the acetate polyatomic ion. It's a 1 minus. I have 1 of it, 1 minus, 0, 1 plus, 1 plus, right? Um, we did the manganese one. Now I would now like to glance at this silver one. And I'm laughing a little bit because you'll see. So we've got silver, Ag. We've got carbonate, CO3, 2 minus. This thing right here, I expect to be a 2 minus, right? And I have one of it, so that gives me two minuses. I got that important 2 right there. Two minuses gets balanced out by two pluses, and though we didn't mention it earlier, uh, when you have a 2 and a 2, it divides as a 1. All right, we are dividing going up. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 plus. So there's our silver 1 carbonate. But I think most people, or in most classes anyway, the teacher would have just said, hey, silver's a 1. You never put a Roman numeral, and they would have just put silver carbonate. But again, why memorize a couple things that have specific charges when you can write silver 1 carbonate uh, and no one's going to be confused. All right, so silver carbonate, you probably see it. Similar situation with zinc, but no harm in putting that one there.